Well, a good morning, everybody. And it's good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I'm really excited and a really big welcome to our listeners on the podcast, Take Charge of Your Health Naturally. And I'm really excited this morning because I have a fabulous guest, a very unusual guest, a very inspiring guest. Her name is Jennifer Spore, and she's all the way from Idaho in the USA, and I'm based in <laughs> Sydney, Australia. So just before um, I hand over to Jenny, um, I'd like to just share a little bit about her mission. So besides she's an inspiring spiritual teacher, she is a channel, she's a spiritual guide, and very very specific area. She is certified Akashic Record Master Consultant and Instructor. So I want to hear a little bit more about that. And what is interesting is her mission is to illuminate the way for new world leaders and light workers like myself and you listeners to navigate their ascension journey. And I love her guidance here she says with ease grace and joy and those are three words I use often she wants people to live fully and be expressed in the way they truly are and how they contribute what I'd love about Jennifer and myself together we share four things in common the one is we love the outdoors I love especially to be under the trees in the woods she loves going on new adventures. And I love that too. My next adventure, I'm going truffle hunting. I've never done that before. We'll ask Jennifer what she loves to do too. Um, And she loves to snuggle with her fur babies. Well, that's one of my passions too. So all things personal and spiritual development come into our daily way of life. So Jennifer, a huge welcome. And thank you for being my guest today. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for such a warm welcome. And thank you for having me. I'm excited. And I don't know if this is going to be on video or not. But I want to share speaking of the outdoors, my special starry mug that when it's hot, you can see it shows like the different constellations. See them. Yes, that's gorgeous. Wonderful. So Jennifer, this area that you're working in and around How did you get involved in that? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, there isn't any one reason or one circumstance in my life, in my experience, and then beyond that, also in, in all the clients that I've worked with, our journey is really more of an evolution, right? So it's not any one thing. It's really rather a lot of different things (laughs) that contribute to bringing us to the path that we're on, you know, so like so many other people, it's many years ago at this point, but like so many other people, I had reached a place in my life where I essentially had checked all the boxes off off the list of what traditional society, you know, teaches us that it means to achieve success, you know, so all the labels, you know, there's this our the 3D society functions a lot around conformity, right? So it's like, here's this key to achieve success. And here's the job that you should have and all of these things. And I and I did all of that. Um, I also did it in a very unconventional way. (laughs) Uh, That being said, I was actually happy in my career for a lot of years, because I used to work in the retail industry. And I worked in retail for 20 something years, like 23, 24 years and worked my way up the ladder. And, and at the end of my career in that industry, there were certain parts of my job that I really loved. I think what led me to coming to the awareness that it was time to step into something new was that I wasn't feeling like I was making a difference anymore. And for me, pretty much my whole life, everything that I was connected with, whether it's a job or a career or a relationship with someone or a friendship with someone, I always, it was important for me to believe in that thing or that person. And it was important for me to feel like I was making a difference. And so 
I stopped feeling challenged. There were no more promotions and I essentially kind of hit a wall and then that's really when the fog started to lift. And even that wasn't an instantaneous realization, right? Like so many people imagine spiritual awakening to be this, you know, oh, you wake up one day and something just clicks. And there are those, those instances, but like I was saying before, more than anything, it's really a series of events and choices and circumstances that lead to that. So even when I began having that awakening, I didn't leave my career right away. You know, it was a, it was a series of events that led to that. And, and mostly I didn't take action right away because of fear, because a a lot of people that are, you know, kind of maybe in a similar generation will understand this, right? It's like younger generations I've noticed aren't as attached to having the same job forever where many of the people that I knew, you know, and including myself come from a generation that were kind of programmed to believe that, oh, if you have the same job for 20 years, 15, 30, whatever years, like that's something to be happy about, right? And so (laughs) I was attached to walking away from an industry that I had worked in for so long. and, And the company that I had worked for, I was with them for 16 years. So fear kept me a lot from moving forward. And it was original, it was actually, I would say the catalyst or the straw that broke essentially was when my mother was diagnosed with stage four cancer. And my job required me to be on all the time, you know, so I was spending time with my mother at that point, flying back and forth to be with her. And there was this moment, this one defining moment that I remember very clearly where my phone was blowing up from work and there were a lot of problems with that happening. And then here I was at my mother's bedside who was in hospice, who was dying and feeling like I needed to choose, right? And that was the moment for me that I said to myself, you know what, I'm done. I'm done with this. Like I am no longer going to keep myself stuck. You know, I'm going to choose no matter what that means. And so essentially my courage exceeded my fear. I had to intentionally make a decision that I wanted something different for my life. I make it a point to mention that just now because so many people, and I've been in this space too, you know, think that if we pray for change and we wish for change, then the change is going to happen. And that's only part of it. The other part (laughs) is us making a conscious decision and reclaiming our power and stepping into our creatorship as divine beings to create the reality that we want for our time here. And once I did that, then everything started to change. And And I didn't even know that I wanted to start a business at that time. That journey all unfolded. I made the leap to move and, and then everything unfolded after that and that and that and, and, and and I, I make it a point to mention that as well, because for the longest time, even before I changed careers, I prayed for a job where I would feel fulfilled again. I prayed every day for to find my divine life partner there were these things that I had been praying for a long time and fast forward a few years later and all of it came to manifest right but like I said the important component around that was that despite my external circumstances and and all that I could say that there was to fear for all of the reasons that there was not to make a change, there were even more reasons that there was to make a change. And so it was really my own journey that led me to starting my own business and, and dedicating my path to supporting other people to um, shine their true light in the world, to live expressed in the truth of, of who they really are my own experience really fuels a lot of my passion for that. And I just naturally have compassion for humanity. And I believe with my whole heart that 
what I'm talking about here, you know, this is the future of our world and an enlightened economy that involves every person <laughs> contributing to the collective in a way that is aligned with their own values and the truth of who they are at a soul level. That is my deepest belief. And so that's the long answer to <laughs> what led me right here, right now. <laughs> so along that journey, moving forward from this point, what do you do in terms of your clients to help them take charge of their health naturally? Because if they are in a, in a mixed up situation and an unhappy situation, that is not good for their health. So what tools do you use to help them find that path? Yep. So I'm an ascension guide for other people on their journey. So what that means really is just to start with what health means to me, how I define health is health throughout all of the bodies being physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually energetically, etherically, right? And the key to optimizing your own health and well-being is in balancing all of those bodies. So many of us have been brought up in a society that, that teaches us that health is primarily focused on the physical body, right? Even now, you know, there is more awareness around mental health and, and spiritual health. Uh, we have a long way to go. Um, and so it's really redefining that. So working with clients to redefine for them what it really means for them to be healthy, right? Any dis-ease, okay, and I emphasize dis-ease, right? Not disease, but dis-ease. Any disease that we experience in our bodies is always the effect of the cause. It's always the effect of the cause, okay? So there's always a deeper cause of disease. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be cancer. It could be you know, ulcers, it could be any ailment always has a deeper meaning and a deeper root cause behind it. So the key is really, which 3D society, even in, in the realm of mental health, right, tends to only treat the symptom and not the problem. So your disease really isn't the problem. It's the symptom of a deeper problem, right? So I'll use an example for myself, which hasn't turned into a chronic illness, but it's caused all kinds of ailments. So just as an example, so when I was a child, okay, a young child, I was often told not to speak unless spoken to. So how do you think that worked out? <laughs> you so, know, now, that you was the way. It wasn't only your family. Or it was for so many people, right? That's why I'm using this as an yes, example. Yes, right? So I'm when fine. I was a young child, I was taught, don't speak unless spoken to. Now, despite being this corporate leader and having this high level director role and all of these things, I still had almost every time I ever fell ill, it was something that had to do with my throat or my respiratory or my lungs almost every time. Now, our throat, right, our lungs are all related to speaking our truth, speaking, being heard. So I use that as an example, right, just to share that for those who are listening, get curious, you know, about yourself, your body, and how you feel and ailments that you've experienced or are experiencing and go within on, you know, what is the, the actual problem, right? Not just the symptom of what is happening. And it's really 
our willingness to go within to do the deeper exploration to face the truth of what's really happening that will provide you with sustainable healing well-being transformation interesting so when you have a client that comes to you how do you guide them through that process so every client that i work with where we always start is you know when someone hires me to support them it's because they're already feeling discontent in their existing reality and they already have a vision for themselves and sometimes they may not feel clear in that vision but whenever we feel unclear it really isn't about the fact that we're unclear it's more about that we feel unclear in what we want because we don't believe that we can have what we really want <laughs> and so when i work with people i start with them always on okay where are you at now and where do you want to be what is that being completely honest with yourself grand vision that you have for your life and then we use that as the roadmap essentially to prioritize the work that we do together and i am i'm i'm guiding them down that path of realizing that vision that they have for their life so a lot of times that involves like I said, ascension and manifestation is all in the balancing of all of the bodies. So it's pinpointing where, you know, where the resistance is coming from, where the blocks coming from and working with them to clear that in order to manifest your desires, your health, whatever that is, right? It requires you to become an energetic match for that because everything is energy, right? So let's talk about losing weight. That's, you know, something a lot of people can relate to. You might have this vision for being your optimal physical self or whatever that looks like for you. And then at the same time, you might be having these thoughts of, oh, I don't think I can really, it can really happen or it's going to be really hard. And what happens is when you do that, you are literally repelling the very thing energetically that you're saying that you want. Because God, the universe, source creation, however you refer to your higher power, is here to answer your prayers. <laughs> the only time that we ever experience struggle or don't get what we want or desire is because we in some way have gotten in our own way, <laughs> right? You know, us saying that we wanna have this body or lose this weight or whatever it is we wanna accomplish, us saying we wanna have optimal health and then talking to ourselves negatively or abusing our body or being hard on our body is like sending a prayer to God and then refusing to answer the phone for him, for God to answer it, right? It's like, oh, I want this. Oh, but then I don't. That's what's happening. It, it's the universe operates, everything operates on an energetic frequency. And so I work with people to become an energetic match for whatever it is that they desire. A lot of the people that I work with have a vision to create something new in the world, right? I, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs, um, not all entrepreneurs, but I work mostly with conscious leaders who have a vision to bring something forward to serve humanity and the planet in some way. And they are trapped they are paving their own path and so paving your own path in a society that has promoted conformity for how many tens of thousands of years however long it's been can feel challenging right there are a lot of beliefs and programming that essentially need to be dismantled including healing of your body 
to fully step into your purpose and mission. That's a lot of information for people who are not have not really stepped into that area of healing, spiritual healing, because that's really where it's at. Am I right? At the base? Well, it is spiritual work. It is spiritual healing, but you can also look at a lot of it as science. I mean, when to me, science is magic. Okay. Um, because everything is energy. So you can talk about energy and everything being energy from like a quantum physics standpoint, or you can talk about it from a spiritual standpoint, but there's an intersection, right, of creation, essentially. So if, if I can just dig a little bit deeper, that area of Akashic Records, you are a consultant and a coach in that area. So is that part of the healing journey? Yeah, so the Akashic Records is one modality that I use with pretty much all of my clients. Um, for those who aren't familiar with the Akashic Records, the Akashic Records are the library for your soul. So assuming that those who are listening to your show believe in having a soul <laughs> and that the soul is eternal, right? The, your soul experiences a lot of different lifetimes. This isn't your only life that you've experienced and you may not remember that, right? But all of your lifetimes, all of your emotions, all of your experiences, everything that you've ever experienced, whether you remember it or you don't, all resides in your Akashic records. And you can work with your Akashic records by learning how to access them yourself or working with someone such as myself to access them and work in your records with you. The reason why I put emphasis on working in the Akashic records is because in my years of experience, I've found that to be one of the most direct paths to healing and to manifestation. And the Akashic records consist of only truth and love. Okay, so you can go have a psychic reading somewhere or work with someone, work with a coach, and they're going to be sharing with you all of their own wisdom and training right? But they're also going to be sharing with you their own conscious bias. Because each of us, each of us in our day to day, our reality, and the way we interpret it is subjective to our own experiences. The Akashic records as a channel, I'm opening up the records to allow someone to access themselves directly at a soul level. So there is no conscious bias. What I'm sharing and channeling from the records is not my own opinion or based upon my own experiences. It's directly from someone's soul. And there are record keepers, divine record keepers, divine guides, you know, um that communicate with someone through their akashic records that communicate through me as a channel but like i said i found working in the records with clients to be one of the most direct paths to healing to sustainable healing because you're essentially going right to the source to illustrate that even further right because i'm sure a lot of people listening and maybe even you have experienced this you hire a healer or you work with a coach and you don't get the results that you want, right? And that could be because you're not showing up fully for yourself and it could be the coach too. So then you hire someone else, right? And you're kind of like thinking, I'm going to get the results that I need and I move on to this person. And, and again, I found that like the deepest healing, the most clarity comes from your Akashic records. And so that's why 
I work with all my clients in the records because my goal as a spiritual advisor, as a guide, is to work with clients to help them reclaim their power so that eventually they're ready to be done with me, right? <laughs> they're feeling confident. They're feeling clear in their path. They're solid in their relationship with God, with themselves, with other people. They're solid in their relationship with their purpose and mission. And they no longer need to work with me to guide them down that path. That's my goal. Well, I think that's an awesome goal. You've, you've shared so much information. What is the best way for people who are listening to get in touch with you? That's the most important thing. Yeah. So the easiest way, you, you can just go right to my website, which is jennifersfor.com. So for those listening, that's J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R-S-P-O-R. And you can get in touch with me through there. There's a way to reach out and message me through my website. I also have a podcast called Path of the Awakened Heart, which is on all the major listening platforms. And so I have new episodes that drop every Wednesday, uh, Thursday for those who are in Australia. And I'm on social media too. So, you know, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram are probably the main platform. So there's lots of ways to reach out to me. But if you're not sure, just go to my website <laughs> and all the things are on my website. Well, I must say, I found you very inspiring and certainly allowing my mind to, to wake up more. <laughs> but the one thing I was going to say, is there something you would like to share with our listeners? Maybe something they can key in to get more insights, a little gift or a, something they can download or anything of that nature to give them a little bit more information. Absolutely. So if you go to my website, actually, there is a tab that says free resources. And there are some guided meditations in there that you can download for free that will help you to get clarity around what's next for you. I believe that nothing happens at random. So chances are a lot of the people that will be listening to this conversation are feeling called to step into what's next for them in some way, right? Whether that's with their health directly or something else that's coming forward. So you can, there's several guided meditations that you can download for free. Just choose whichever one feels aligned for you, which will help to serve you in moving forward on your path. Awesome, Jennifer. Thank you. And in closing, is there one tip you'd like to share with our listeners? Yeah, and that's that you can't get back time. There will always be more money. There will always be other jobs. There will always be other opportunities, but there isn't time. And so go within and be radically honest with yourself. And are you living the life that you desire in every way. And if you're feeling guided to change, make the leap. Oh, Jennifer, thank you so much. I've really appreciated your time this morning and you sharing from your heart, giving such sound um, advice from your wealth of experience in this particular field that I think in many instances people ignore. So just because they're healthy in their body and they're looking, feeling great, there might be a whole vacuum there that they are not looking at, which will affect so many other areas of their life with that dis-ease that you mentioned earlier. So from Jennifer and myself, I want to say thank you for listening. Have a wonderful day, night, evening, whatever it is for you. And we'll see you next time on Take Charge of Your Health Naturally.